As a person of African descent, we must really analyze the history of the Atlantic slave trade because at times, popular narratives overshadow proper historical perspectives. That being said, all throughout the history of enslavement, Africans from various ethnic backgrounds resisted, some more successful than others. The ultimate success, of course, being the Haitian Revolution. But today, I wanted to touch on one African ethnic group that received such a reputation for being so rebellious that certain enslavers didn't even want to acquire them. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. As mentioned before, Africans of various ethnic backgrounds resisted slavery in different ways. Nearly all ethnic groups who were forcefully taken across the Atlantic had some history of resistance. However, some African ethnic groups had more success. And I don't necessarily mean success in terms of actually achieving their principal goals, but success in terms of making enslavers think twice about acquiring them, simply because of the trouble they would have to go through. The most salient among these ethnic groups were the Akan-speaking peoples. Ironically, Africans from the Gold Coast, a region in which many Akan live, were in demand on the island of Jamaica. They were deemed good workers, but the caveat to that was that they were also more likely to kill their enslavers. When it came to the enslaved Akan people in Jamaica, their military training and their courage led them to resist oppression. They rebelled more frequently than any other ethnic group. Edward Long, a planter historian, described how 33 of them, mostly new arrivals, murdered or wounded 19 white men in an hour. The Jamaica Assembly, assessing the causes of the mid-18th century revolts, declared all these disturbances have been planned and conducted by the Coromanti Negroes. Modern writers confirm that Akan slaves did indeed organize the serious rebellions of the 17th and 18th centuries. Knowing their reputation, planters of the Eastern Caribbean avoided buying Akan slaves. This history is pretty significant because of the hell brought upon by enslaved Akan people in particular, entire regions of the Caribbean refused to even acquire them. Despite this, British slavers in particular preferred enslaved Africans from the Gold Coast. Perhaps one of the other reasons why Jamaica continued to acquire enslaved Akan people was because of the options enslavers had. Apparently, enslavers on smaller islands were more selective in their acquisition of enslaved Africans as larger islands such as Jamaica could only obtain enslaved people in sufficient numbers if they acquired any African brought to their shores. Thus they were left to deal with the Akan problem. So, this history begs the question, why were the Akan so much more prone to rebellion and seemingly more successful at it, creating entire maroon settlements, particularly in Jamaica? Well, it's because many of the Akan men had active military experience in Africa. African groups other than Angolans also gained a reputation for military prowess. In the Caribbean, Many so-called Coromantes, Akan-speaking people from the Gold Coast, had military experience which may well account for the familiarity with guns and even cannon that they showed in late 17th century Jamaican rebellions. One governor of Barbados described the enslaved Akan men as warlike, and a connection was drawn between the leaders of the Akan state of Akwamu captured in war between 1730 and 1732 and the slave rebellion of 1733 in the Danish West Indies. So as alluded to in the quote earlier, how did the Akan people have experience with guns in Africa? Well, in the 17th century, Akan states such as Akwamu and Denkiera gained access to updated firearms, particularly the new flintlocks. This helped to transform Akan warfare. 
they began to form their own formations and employ entire units of musketeers. Aquamu was the first Akan state to adopt firearms, and its rulers cultivated an army made up of a core of semi-professional gunmen and a large number of conscripts. So around a century earlier, many Akan people not only had introductory knowledge of firearms, but they were building semi-professional armies around it. Thus, they were well aware of traditional African warfare and more modern military tactics. This clearly served them well in the forest areas of the Caribbean, where they likely used both tactics of warfare to establish maroon settlements. In short, many slaves had served in African armies prior to their enslavement and, as ex-soldiers and veterans of African wars, they probably needed little encouragement to serve again. Some of the tactics of maroons and other rebellious slaves, small bands, skirmishing, close combat, may owe something to homeland experiences. Aside from the independent maroon settlements in Jamaica spearheaded by the Akan-speaking Africans, one of the biggest rebellions on the island of Jamaica called Taki's Rebellion was yet again initiated by the Akan. The Coromanti were Africans who were identified linguistically as Akan and Ga speakers, and they organized the rebellion around clearly distinguished ethnic lines. It was only the Coromanti who planned and carried out the incident. The other African tribal groups represented among Jamaica's enslaved population were not included in the rebellion. In fact, some of the other slaves who did not revolt were pressed into service to help suppress the Coromanti. Akan warriors made things very difficult for enslavers, and it would be of no surprise to learn of an Akan-led uprising across many rebellions throughout the Caribbean. Even Akan culture or spirituality, known across the Caribbean as Obia, was used as a spark and foundation for many of the rebellions and ruined settlements in the Caribbean. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.